This video is to show how to install Linux Mint 9. This version is KDE, which is the K desktop environment. There are other uh, desktop environments such as GNOME, LXDE, um, XFCE, Fluxbox, but I have decided just to install uh, KDE in this uh, virtual box. Right now I'm in the desktop environment, the GUI, and in order to get to this, you basically have to boot into the CD, and most computers will allow you to uh, select the boot sequence by pushing F12 when you reboot your computer. But as you get into the desktop environment, as you can see, there's uh, install Linux Mint, and that's what we want to click on. So, I uh, personally prefer using GNOME Edition or the GNOME desktop environment. Um, KDE is is really nice and everything, but it's somewhat alien to me so this is just basically to show you how to install uh, any Linux distribution if you can install this one you can install basically anything there are uh, distributions that use CLI which is the command line interface and that can become a bit confusing but Linux Mint is a derivative of uh, Ubuntu, which uses a graphical user interface installer. So, as you can see, the installer has loaded up, and the first thing it's going to ask for is language, and for my language, it's English, so I'm just going to click forward. The next thing is going to be the time zone, then the keyboard. Uh, Mainly this video is being done to show how to set up the disk or your partitions. <coughs> My time zone is correct, so... Just click next or forward. Now, uh, since this is being done in the virtual box, it tends to be a little bit slower. So when you're installing via the DVD image, or uh, the DVD itself, it should go by a little bit quicker. The keyboard layout is United States of America variant as United States of America, so this is correct for me also. Uh, obviously, if you're in a different area or you want a different keyboard layout this is where you'd select it now getting into the disk setup since I'm using the virtual box I really don't have anything it basically it's showing an unallocated uh, hard drive so it's just giving me two options erase and use the entire disk which is uh, simple to do and it's basically the windows way of doing things and specify partitions manually which is an advanced setup if I had windows installed on this hard drive it would have a third option asking if I wanted to install side by side and uh, if you were to choose that it would basically ask how much memory you'd want to allocate for the Linux operating system and it would pretty much do everything for you, it would just use one partition but when installing Linux it's actually best to separate your partitions, to separate your home folder into a different partition from the root folder and whatnot. 
but uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to show how to do a very simple uh, partition layout. So since this is an unallocated hard drive, uh, I have to create a new partition table. If Windows is already installed and you're completely wiping Windows out, it would already be there. And uh, if you're deciding to completely wipe Windows out, you would just create a new partition table as I had done. Um, free space. The first thing you want to do is you want to create the root partition. And the root partition has everything in it. It has your boot sectors. It has uh, anything that you don't specify outside of it. It will be within it. And I'm just going to give it around a little bit less than 4 gigabytes. So extension 4 is a, a good file system. And forward slash stands for root. Uh, if you don't know what it is, you can just click on the drop down box and select it. Now, <clears throat> the reason why you want to do this also is separating things. When you reinstall or if you're upgrading to another Linux distribution, you will go through these same steps again. But the difference is what you would want to do is you'd want to format. As you can see, there's a format, the little checkbox. You would check the ones that you want to format, which would be the root and the temp, the temporary uh, partition. But your home partition is the one that you want to make sure that the format is not checked. So your data will be untouched. So that, that's one reason why we want to separate the partitions and the directories on different partitions. Now the second thing you're going to want to do, and we'll give it around 500 megabytes, we'll make it a logical, and it has to be the swap. The swap area, normally you'd want to give it around a gigabyte to two gigabytes, which would be uh, 1,000... 24 megabytes for a gigabyte and 2048 megabytes for two gigabytes. There is no mount point, it's the swap area. So, But this being a virtual box, I really don't have much memory to play with. <clears throat> when you uh, decide to do this on your hard drive, you would want to give your root partition a good 50 to 70 gigabytes and your temporary partition you would want to give that uh, I would say around 15 to 30 gigabytes should be good extension 4 again temporary now the reason why you want to separate your temporary directory into its own partition is because if you're burning a CD or you know, working with audio or video, it takes up a lot of space. And in Linux, it's always sent into the temporary directory until it's ready to be burned and you know whatever you're doing until it's almost complete. And if your temporary directory is within your root, you're going to notice your main memory depleting quickly. So in order to keep all the temporary junk out of your main memory, you want to separate it. And the last one will be the home partition. <coughs> the home partition, if you're a Windows user, is basically uh, my documents. Everything is saved in here. All your pertinent data. Um, you would want to give that around 100 gigabytes if you can. Uh, you can finish it off if you have a 500 gigabyte hard drive and you have like 300 gigabytes left. You can go on ahead and give your home partition 300 gigabytes. Though it's always best to make it smaller and then make a backup partition. So in case you want to clean up your hard drives, you can always copy all your stuff to backup and then reinstall and format everything. So at, when you go through this a second time, say if you had to reinstall your operating system or you're upgrading 
these little checks, you would relabel these, the mount points. But for the home partition, you're going to want to make sure that that is not checked at all. So just a little reminder. The user information is basically going to ask for username and password. If you want to log in automatically, which is unsecure, require your password to log in and require a password to log in and decrypt your home folder. That's if you want extra security. Basically, if anyone puts a live CD into the CD-ROM, they can see whatever's on that hard drive. But if you encrypt the hard drive, encrypt your home folder, they won't be able to see anything. So. Now for the name, I'm just going to put user. For the user login name, it, all, it has to always be lowercase. And we'll just give it a password. Now, the name of your computer, the reason why you'd want to give a name to your computer is because if you're on a network, you'll be able to log in remotely if you set it up properly. So we'll just say uh, KDE.virtual. So that should be fine. Hit forward. And the summary is just going to tell you exactly what you did through language, time zone, keyboard, uh, disk setup, and whatnot. Gives you all your information right here. Um, if you're going through this a second time and you don't want to format your home partition, this is where you're going to look. So since we, we're doing four partitions, your root, swap, temporary, and home, you would only want three. So clicking on advance will allow you to install the bootloader or not. The bootloader is basically uh, Grub2 and it will overwrite the uh, Windows bootloader if you're uh, dual booting. So if you decide that you don't like Linux and you want Windows, instead of dual boot and you just want to send it back to Windows, you can't delete the partition, the Linux partition, if you installed the Grub2. Um, before deleting the partition, you would need to actually have the Windows installation disk on hand so you can fix the uh, master boot record in the hard drive. So just to let you know, a lot of people make that mistake. So as you can see it's installing. Due to it being on the virtual box, it's going to take a little bit longer to install.